Bartholomew Roberts was originally born as John Roberts in 1682 in Wales. It is not clear why he changed his name from John to Bartholomew, but pirates often adopted aliases. He is thought to have gone to sea when he was 13 in 1695, but there is no further record of him until 1718 when he was mate of a Barbados sloop. In 1719, he was third mate on the slave ship Princess under Captain Abraham Plum. In early June that year, the Princess anchored at Anamabu, which is situated along the Golden Coast of West Africa. When it was captured by pirates, the pirates were in two vessels, the Royal Rover and the Royal James, and were led by Captain Howell Davis. Several of the crew of the Princess were forced to join the pirates, including Roberts. The Royal Rover headed for the island of Principe. Davis hoisted the flags of a British man of war and was allowed to enter the harbor. After a few days, Davis invited the governor to lunch on board his ship, intending to hold him hostage for a ransom. The Portuguese inhabitants by now had discovered that their visitors were in fact pirates, and on the way to the fort, Davis's party was ambushed, and Davis himself was shot dead. A new captain had to be elected. Within six weeks of his capture, Bartholomew Roberts was elected captain. His first act as captain was to lead the crew back to Princip to avenge the death of Captain Roberts. Robert and his crew sprang onto the island in the darkness of night, killed a large portion of the male population, and stole all items of valuable that they could carry away. Soon afterwards, he captured a Dutch Guineaman, then two days later a British ship called the Experiment. The pirate ship took on water and provisions at Anambo, where a vote was taken on whether the next voyage should be to the East Indies or to Brazil. Brazil won the vote. The combination of bravery and success that marked this adventure cemented most of the crew's loyalty to Roberts. They concluded that he was pistol-proof and that they had much to gain by staying with him. Robert's first flag shows himself in death holding an hourglass, was created around this time. Roberts and his crew crossed the Atlantic. They then spent about nine weeks off the Brazilian coast but saw no ships. They were about to leave for the West Indies when they encountered a fleet of 42 Portuguese ships waiting for two men of war of 70 guns each to escort them to Lipson. Roberts took one of the vessels and ordered the master to point out the richest ship in the fleet. He pointed out a ship of 40 guns and a crew of 170, which Roberts and his men boarded and captured. The ship contained 40,000 gold modures and jewelry designed for the King of Portugal. By now, the Royal Rover had been renamed the Rover, which headed for Devil's Island off the coast of Guiana to spend this booty. A few weeks later, they headed for the river a few weeks later, they headed for the river Suriname, where they captured a sloop. A brigantine was then sighted, and Roberts took 40 men to pursue it in the sloop, leaving Walter Kennedy in command of the rover. When he finally returned, Roberts discovered that Kennedy had sailed off with the rover and what remained of the loot. In late February 1720, they were joined by French pirate Montigny La Palissy in another sloop, the Sea King. The inhabitants of Barbados equipped two well-armed ships, the Somerset and the Philippa, to try to put an end to the pirate menace. On the 26th of February, they encountered the two pirate sloops. The Sea King quickly fled and the fortune broke off the engagement after sustaining considerable damage. Roberts headed for Dominica to repair the sloop, with 20 of his crew dying of their wounds on the voyage. And Roberts swore vengeance against the inhabitants of Barbados and Mentonique. He then had a new flag made with a drawing of himself standing on two skulls, one labeled ABA and the other AMA, each standing for a Barbadian's head and a Martikian's head. The fortune next headed northwards towards Newfoundland, raiding Conso Nova Scotia and capturing a number of ships around Cape Breton and Newfoundland banks. Roberts raided the harbor of Ferryland, capturing a dozen vessels. On the 21st of June, he attacked the larger harbor of Trepassy, sailing in with black flags flying. In the harbor, he discovered 22 merchant ships and 150 fishing ships, all of which were abandoned by their panic-stricken captains and crews. And the pirates were masters of Trepancy, and the pirates became masters of Trepassy without any resistance being offered. Roberts had captured all 22 merchant ships, but was angered by the cowardice of the captains who had fled their ships. One brig from Bristol was taken over by the pirates to replace the sloop Fortune and fitted out with 16 guns. When the pirates left, all the other vessels in the harbor were set on fire. During July, Roberts captured nine French ships and commandeered one of them, fitting it with 26 cannons and changed its name to the Good Fortune. With this more powerful ship, the pirates captured many more vessels before heading south for the West Indies, accompanied by Montigny La Palissy's sloop, which had rejoined them. 
In September 1720, the Good Fortune was careened and repaired at the island of Karakachu before being renamed the Royal Fortune, the first of several ships to be given this name by Roberts. In late September, the Royal Fortune and the Fortune headed out for the island of St. Christopher's and entered Basi Terry Road, flying black flags and with their drummers and trumpeters playing. The next landfall was at the island of St. Bartholomew, where the French governor allowed the pirates to remain for several weeks to carouse. By the 25th of October, they were at sea again off St. Lucia, where they had captured up to 15 French and English ships in the next three days. Among the captured ships was the Greyhound, whose chief mate James Scrime joined the pirates. During this time, Roberts caught the governor of Martinique, who was sailing aboard a man of war. Robert's ship pulled up next to the man of war pretending to be a French merchant ship and offered information on the location of Captain Roberts before suddenly attacking it, spraying the warship with cannon and small arms fire, after which the pirates boarded it and took it over using pistols and cutlasses. The governor was caught and promptly hung on the yardum of the royal fortune. By the spring of 1721, Robert's actions had almost brought seaborne trade to a standstill in the West Indies. The royal fortune and the good fortune therefore set sail for West Africa. On the 18th of April, Thomas Ansys, the commander of the Good Fortune, left Roberts in the night and continued to raid shipping in the Caribbean. The Royal Fortune continued towards Africa. By late April, Roberts was at the Cape Verde Islands. The Royal Fortune was found to be leaking and was abandoned there. The pirates transferred to the Sea King, which they renamed Royal Fortune. The new Royal Fortune made landfall off the Guinea coast in early June near the mouth of the Senegal River. Two French ships gave chase but were captured by Roberts. Both these ships were commandeered, one being renamed the Ranger, while the other was named Little Ranger and used as a store ship. Thomas Sudan was made captain of the Ranger and James Scrime, captain of Little Ranger. Roberts next headed for Sierra Leone, arriving on the 12th of June. Here he was told that two Royal Navy ships, HMS Swallow and HMS Weymouth, had left at the end of April, planning to return before Christmas. On August 8th, he captured two ships at Point Sestos, now now known as River Cess in Liberia. One of these was the frigate Onslow, transporting soldiers bound for Cape Coast Castle. A number of the soldiers wished to join the pirates and were eventually accepted. The Onslow was converted to become the fourth royal fortune. On the 5th of February 1722, Captain Shanalor Ogley of the HMS Swallow came upon the pirate ships Royal Fortune Ranger and Little Ranger careening at Cape Lopez. Swallow veered away to avoid a shoal, making the pirates think it was a fleeing merchant ship. The ranger departed in pursuit, commanded by James Scrime. Once out of earshot of the other pirates, the Swallow opened fire. Ten pirates were killed, and Skirm had his leg taken off by a cannonball. Eventually, the ranger was forced to surrender. On the 10th of February, the Swallow returned to Cape Lopez and found the Royal Fortune still there. On the previous day, Roberts had captured the Neptune. The pirate's plan was to sail past the Swallow and keep sailing. However, the helmsman failed to keep the Royal Fortune on the right course and the Swallow was able to approach to deliver a second broadside attack. Captain Roberts was killed by grape shot, which stuck him in the throat while he stood on the deck. Before he could be captured, Robert's wish to be buried at sea was fulfilled by his crew, who weighed his body down and, and threw it overboard by wrapping it in the ship's sail. Robert's death shocked the pirate world, as well as the Royal Navy, and the local merchants and civilians who thought him invincible. The battle, however, continued for another two hours until the Royal Fortune's mainmast fell and the pirates signaled for quarter. A total of 272 men had been captured by the Royal Navy. The remainder were taken to Cape Coast Castle, apart from those who died on the voyage back. 54 of them were condemned to death, of 52 were hung. Captain Shanalor Ogley was rewarded with a knighthood, the only British naval officer to be honored specifically for his actions against pirates. The battle proved a turning point in the war against the pirates, and many consider the death of Roberts to mark the end of the golden age of piracy.